Now, President Trump meets with Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel next week. The meeting will take place at the White House. Come on in, please. Nigel Farage, the man behind Brexit and former UKIP leader. All right, Nigel, let, let's, let's cut all the stuff about immigration aside for one second. I think President Trump will demand that Germany spend more money on its military. Are we prepared, are you prepared in Europe for the rearmament of Germany? Well, I've got to tell you that uh, Germany um, and, in fact, most of the EU members of NATO are not paying their way, haven't been paying their way for years. In fact, Germany is spending nearer 1% of its budget on defence than the 2% that NATO rules suggest. And I think they're going to have some very harsh talks. My worry with all of this is that the European Union um, are saying to people like Germany, don't worry, spend less. Let's have a European army and ditch NATO. And I do not believe that is a good thing for world peace. I think that this is, frankly, the most important discussion yeah. that Merkel and Trump can have. They don't see eye to eye on so many issues, do they? Merkel and Trump, they just don't see eye to eye. No, they don't. Of course they don't. And, uh, you know, Trump himself has, has described Merkel's policy of saying anyone that wants to come will find room for you. Trump has called that a catastrophic error. Uh, I have to say, I'm very much on Trump's side of this argument, and uh, mm -hmm. whenever I've personally met Mrs. Merkel, uh, my relations with her have not been too good, I have to be honest. Um, so, no, they're not naturally going to be friends. And it's a big shock for the Germans, because for the last eight years, President Obama looked towards Germany as being his principal ally in Europe, whereas Trump looks towards the United Kingdom. So... This is big change. Can you bring us up to speed on the two elections in Europe that are coming up? There's one in the Netherlands, I think, this month, where uh, a nationalist guy could win. And then there's the big one in France just a little later. What, what's the state of play in those two elections, Nigel? Right. Uh, the state of play is that Gert Wilders, uh, his party, the PVV, are in the lead in the opinion polls. I don't think anyone doubts that he will win the election in the sense that his party will get the biggest number of votes and the biggest number of seats, but it's unlikely he'll be able to form a coalition government. Uh, what is happening in France is absolutely fascinating. Uh, Marine Le Pen of the Front National, um, a party that I've never liked very much, although I've got time, I must say, for Marine Le Pen herself. She's in the lead. So here's how it works, guys. It's difficult to, to, to explain this to Americans, having just been through your run, but there is a first round. There'll be about 14 candidates, um, and the top two go through to a runoff, which will take place in May. It's going to be Le Pen against either possibly the former French Prime Minister Francois Fillon, although he is dogged by allegations of corruption, or it's her against Macron, who, rather like Monsieur Trudeau uh, from Canada, is sort of a pretty boy uh, without much political experience. Uh, but if it's Macron v Le Pen, which is what I think it's going to be, it won't just be a battle of personalities, but a battle of ideologies. Macron supports the Euro, the United States of Europe, a European army. Le Pen believes in independence. It could be, hmm. if that's the runoff, the most important democratic election the West has seen for many, many years. Give me a prediction, would you? Six months from now, is the European Union more shaky than it is now because of those two elections? Do you know something? Even if, even if Le Pen doesn't win outright, she'll win because she'll shift the centre of gravity of the whole European debate in France. The European Union is dying before our very eyes. The only question is, how long will it take? All right.